I was still able to move extremely quickly to get rounds on target and just run that pistol like a sewing machine. Now doing the speed test, the EDC does really well, but that's just not where it shines. And where this thing just is so amazing is in on the reloads and all the changing targets that just makes it so crazy. And that's why you get the EDC. Shalom, wizards. I got another Bull Armory pistol review for you. I know it's crazy because I've gotten to shoot all the new Bull pistols with like the comps and the ports, and it's just a little bit nuts that this one just sings to me every single time I shoot it. That pistol we'll be tearing into today is the all new 2024 Bull EDC with the four and a quarter barrel. As a reminder, the EDC in the name is the new naming convention from Bull, meaning it's using the lighter and faster aluminum frame, which I really do think lends itself more to like a carry EDC, a little bit more than the TAC does anyway. I'll show you when we get into the testing. So the new 2024 EDC we have today is the upgraded version of the SAS TAC 2 four and a quarter that we first reviewed if you wanna see how this line of pistols has evolved. Much like last year, I'm comparing apples to apples here, and we again have the non-ported version, and I'm really excited to see the EDC after the aluminum frame was just my absolute favorite thing to shoot. Now, before we get too far into it, let's take a moment and thank today's sponsor. Today's video was sponsored in part by Javelin Concepts. Javelin rethinks gear innovation with the MCR Cummerbund to give you a next generation hook and loop connection system that still incorporates legacy bungee expansion giving you a structural cummerbund that solves the problems of all its competitors. And Javelin sticks by their comfort guarantee to give you money back if it's not the most comfortable carrier you've ever worn. So if you wanna take them up on their challenge with the AJAC carrier, make sure to use discount code TLDCO over at javelinconcepts.com. Javelin does a ton to support our channel, so big thanks from the TLD team. Now, Bull also gives us a lot of love and we really like those guys, so we gotta take a moment and talk about potential biases. I'll tell you right now that I'm pretty biased because Bull stands for just about everything that I love in a company. They're just absolutely great people making pistols that push the envelope of performance while keeping the cost down. They really are a beacon of light in like a literal sea of other companies that are just super excited to rip you off with a design they made like five years ago. Now, Bull did provide me with this EDC to review for you, but please be aware that due to me really liking the brand and the people behind it, that I'm super biased for this based company. My kids just told me I'm not allowed to say based anymore. Now, I say all that like normal to remind you all to watch other videos and other reviews than just mine so that you can be the most educated consumers possible. But when we go out to the test, the results are gonna be just what the results are gonna be. I will say though, before we get this thing on the bench and get started, let's take just a moment and do some first shots. All right, so this is my first time getting to look at the new Bull 2024 EDC with you guys. I did get to shoot at GunCon, so I guess it's not my first shots, but hopefully this performs as well as it did over at that show because I absolutely love that thing. Let's find out. It's definitely got a little more, like you don't have those ports and the comps that make the TAC Pro and you know the, the TAC comp so crazy. It's a little bit more control there, but really where it comes into is you just have a lot more finesse in the lighter frame. Let's do a little bit more. Yep. Yeah, I'm ready to drill this thing. All right, let's get into it. Yeah, it's a lot like someone just added a plus sign to last year's model. All the things I loved, plus a little more. I'm excited to run all the drills through it, but tell you what, let's get on the bench, let's get started. Here's the all new 2024 Bull EDC. I think the first thing everyone notices are how all the silver accents are now blacked out and the naming markings have been subdued. Here, I'll show you last year's model for comparison. As I noted, this is also the four and a quarter version on both pistols. You can also get the aluminum EDC frame in the five inch pro model like we have here in our TAC Pro if you want that longer barrel and the V8 porting. 
Personally, I think the four and a quarter barrel and aluminum frame just meld together perfectly in that EDC roll to have that weapon system that's lighter to carry and faster to draw. I also wanna compare this year and last year's EDC models directly, so I did the non-ported version. And also, all sorts of fun things can happen when you have ports and shoot from retention. Small metal shards of fun, but those little party goers definitely delete recoil, so there's certainly a trade-off there for sure. I just find I like to have a non-ported version in a carry gun. Let's actually get into it though. Looking at the slide, we see the same deep cut serration upgrade we saw in the new TAC Pro to give you a ton of bite on the side of the slide. We also see the subdued markings we mentioned earlier and the partial dust cover to cut some additional weight. The entire slide also has a nice PVD matte coating. I know everybody wants DLC and I love the guys over at Armor Lube that do that coating. Hi, Jason. But building a pistol in Israel to ship it to America for coating, to ship it back to Israel for final fitment, to ship it back to America for sale, well, that's, that's kind of stupid. The PVD coating has held up great though, and my TAC Pro has seen some trigger and holster time. If you wanna see what some Safari Land holster wear looks like, it looks, well, it looks perfect still. Looking at the optic side of the EDC, it includes the new BAO optics plate system that I just love. The optic system takes the shearing forces off the optic screws by instead transferring it to the center island. You also have included plates for the RMR, 407K slash RMSC, and delta point footprints. I did also hear that Bull is working on some acro footprints, and they'll include those plates later on, but the acro optics are overrated anyway. Much love to Ben Stoger. The BAO optic system also sits much lower than the previous year model allowing you to have co-witness to your front iron sights. For the irons, both the standard and pro versions of the EDC have blacked out rear sights. For the front, the standard EDC has a fiber optic, but the V8 ported pro model will have a blacked out front sight. The ports would just burn up a fiber optic if it was out there up front, but I'm a red dot guy, so I don't really care about the irons and their configuration. But I guess if we're looking at it, you know, the EDC in the vein of a carry, I would again want to have the non-ported version so then I could have that illuminated sight with the fiber optic just in case my optic were to fail. Now I do want to bring this up. You're going to notice from my shooting footage that the optic I'm using is the CNH EDC that I just didn't love for my range time and I did swap it out to a known superstar. I want to make sure to share this with you. On the bull site, they have a list of which size screws you need to have with the correct thread pitch and depth to hold your optic in place with the BAO system. The included CNH screws weren't long enough, so I used some other screws I found that I thought would work. Guess what though? They weren't the correct length and didn't work. And that's when I looked at the bull chart and realized my mistake. So I ordered the Swamp Fox optic screw kit that has a billion different screws, so I would have the correct ones in the future, even if I had to grind these down. But from my shooting, I didn't find I loved the tiny dot, and I spent most of the day having issues seeing the dot and just chasing it around. Ultimately, I ended up installing a Holosun 507C instead of reinstalling the CNH EDC, and I think it really highlighted the power of the BAO optic system. I can just be like, nah, I'm not really loving it, and grab a different optic plate and install an entirely different optic with an entirely different cut. I'm sorry, little guy, but I did give you a try on two different platforms and it just hasn't worked out. Oh, I'm assuming some of you are gonna ask why I didn't use the ZeroTech Halo and good Lord, did it look ridiculous, but also it wouldn't even fit in the holster. And I really felt like having an optic that didn't fit in the holster for a carry gun just didn't make any sense at all. So we'll, we'll try that guy as an offset or something later on. Finally, back on the gun, we see our four and a quarter stainless steel bull barrel. We see the same upgrade as previous 2024 models with the new flush fit crown barrel to give a cleaner look and provide some added consistency to the platform. Moving downward to controls, we see the same lightweight competition hammer bull is just known for that is just impossible to outpace. We also see the same fantastic tactile and audible safety selector and the same nice slide catch that is textured to give you that obvious shelf when you're doing reloads to make the whole system just fantastic. Next for the trigger, we have that design that just defines industry leading triggers. You have this slight drop into the wall, then it stays solid as you pull through with a then hilariously short reset 
that puts you right back up against the wall. Measuring my trigger reset, I got about two and a half pounds-ish when I went and tested it a few times. In terms of triggers, it's just perfect for a carry gun because it's consistent and insanely fast. Meaning even under the pressure and the stress of a crazy situation, you're gonna be able to put multiple rounds accurately downrange. On the trigger, the shoe is also modular. So you can change out the design to be more flat or curved if you want that. I personally like the style it ships with as it's easy to get that consistent finger position. But just as another hat tip to you from Bull, they recognize that you may wanna customize that. And you can do it without voiding your warranty which is something they don't let you do over there in uh, over there in big Texas. Looking at some more upgrades, on the frame we see the grip safety has also been blacked out along with the grip screws and other small accents. You still have a full Picatinny accessory rail that we attached on our Surefire X300 Ultra. A ton of you asked about this also, it's the Emissary Development Paddle Shifter V2. The issue I found with the X300 was, well, the controls blow. This paddle shifter gives me a gas brake type grip while also allowing me to push forward to activate the light or flick it down for constant on. It just results in a ton better control over the light function. Next we have our mag release. Now this circle release has grown on me and it works, but yeah, it's not really my favorite. I hope the mag release gets some love from bull engineers at some point. It's the only piece you look at and it's like, eh, it's a circle and it's starting to seem a little bit out of place with all the other upgrades on every other piece. Now I get it, it's so you can use a mag extension, but I really feel like the EDC and the tack line kind of lean more into duty than competition, and having a mag extension on one of these, I don't know, it would just be a little weird. Now though, moving up the grip, you have what I think is the absolute best in the business. The side texturing and knurling on the front and back just works so great to keep your hand held and locked in place. It's what everyone first notices when they hold it, and the grip and the texture is just what every other company is trying to achieve. Now you notice how there's no stupid stars and other crap on this? Wonder why that is. How you guys even see this? Even the screw is textured. Finally at the bottom we have our magwell. This has been updated to have a nice matte finish, and I found this magwell, just like all the others, lets you do just totally stupid things with your mags and still have them all insert correctly. For me, large magwells and large base plates print really bad when I carry appendix, so they do supply you with a pin you can install and just remove this whole magwell piece. Now when you buy, everything comes in a nice bull armory bag that holds all your goodies. Included are all the optics plates I mentioned, some stickers, some cleaning tools, and your guide rod retention tool. Also included with the EDC are three 18 round magazines that all ship with the flat base plates that I just showed you. The TAC series ships with the 20 round mags and the EDC with the 18, and I think the 18 makes a whole lot more sense from an EDC standpoint. And it's really nice that they send you three of the same magazine size. I've purchased some other 2011s and you get like two mags, but one is a 17 and one is a 20. Why? I, I absolutely hate that. Now that's all the pistol details, but there's one I keep getting asked about like a billion times, and that's what holsters actually work with this. I'm using the Safariland 6354 RDS to get full lockup with the four and a quarter. The five inch doesn't lock into this holster, but I'm sure you could heat it up and make it so it works a little bit better. For the five inch model, I use the 6360. Now this also doesn't lock up, but I can use the level three hood to lock the hammer in place. It's not perfect, but they work. If you have a better solution, then answer the 5,000 comments that are gonna be down below. I promise you, it won't matter that I said what holster I'm using. They're not gonna watch the video anyway, and I'm still gonna have 10,000 of those comments. All right, but let's finally go shoot this thing. Let's test drawing from a holster so we can see how it performs in terms of speed and agility. Here, as expected, the aluminum frame just shined. Similar to last year, it was like having a sword cutting through the air that moved quickly and easily to put rounds on target. I was surprised by just how lightweight and effortless the whole system was, and it reminded me of exactly what it meant to have a fighting pistol and not just a concealed carry. The EDC just nails speed and agility when split seconds count, and it's definitely the carry pistol that I'd wanna have with me.
Now though, we have sacrificed our ports and some weight with the lighter frame. So let's see how that translates in our return to zero test. As a reminder with our return to zero test, I'm gonna take a shot and then wait for the red dot to come back on target so we can see how the gun itself mitigates recoil and how much I have to do to control it. Now, even without the added weight and fancy ports, the EDC is still amazingly balanced, giving me a platform that returns to zero so quickly. Now, I am doing a little more to control recoil, and it's not as fast as the ported version, but man, it's still impressive how naturally that dot returns to center. I'll have to borrow somebody's EDC Pro with the V8 ports to see how that one does in terms of recoil, but for a pistol that I wanna carry every day, I thought the return to zero was just phenomenal. Some other guns can be so snappy, even being big and heavy, and you don't have that at all here with it being just so lightweight and balanced. All right, though, let's move into the next series of tests, and Bull seems to always nail this one with the way they lean into that competition approach, and that's the controls. The slightly smaller grip size means the controls are easy to reach and manipulate, along with having a magwell that gives you a cheat code and reloads. Weapon manipulation was just so seamless as this platform always seemed to know what I wanted to do and just flowed with me at every single step. I think also having a carry gun is a lot about having confidence in the platform, confidence in the reliability, and confidence in your own shooting ability. And man, just out of the box, I promise you, you're gonna pick this thing up and just run it like a top. All right though, we got more tests to do and who, th this is a fun one. This is the speed test. Here the bull trigger just showed what this platform can do allowing me to just rip through shots seamlessly. Without any ports or comps, I was still able to move extremely quickly to get rounds on target and just run that pistol like a sewing machine. Now doing the speed test, the EDC does really well, but that's just not where it shines. And where this thing just is so amazing is in on the reloads and all the changing targets. That just makes it so crazy. and that's why you get the EDC. The EDC is just like speed stacked on speed and it's just stupid fun to shoot. Now, I did also wanna try some other ammo and make sure all of that worked also. So we started this, not thinking we can quit now. Here's the AAC ammo, just to make sure it locks back with both magazines. Yep. All right, now I got some Blazer 115 grain loaded up, so let's just see how these do. Yep. Oh, they shoot so much softer than the AAC, too. Oh, those are amazing. I need to shoot more of these. All right, I want to try the return to zero test with the Blazer. I'm sure some of this is a mix and match of ammo, so let's just see how this does. That, that dot is hard to see sometimes. Ooh, that is... That is a little bit nicer. Huh, surprising. I really like the SMB 124 grain. Though. I do also want to note that we had not one single failure and it even ate through all the cheap crap. The only issue I had as mentioned was the optic coming loose and giving me some fits along with just not loving that dot and brightness. The optic mounting was more my fault though, but in the words of Ruby Rod, if you got that reference, then I just absolutely love you. Now, it's pretty apparent that I just love this pistol, just like I loved it last year, but let's move into a few pros and cons. The first pro I wanna say is just how much I love the new design changes. Much like the TAC Pro, the black accents really change the tone of the pistol to give it that more duty and professionally oriented blacked out look. It just looks hungry for ammo all the time. Now, my next big pro is just that speed and balance of the whole pistol. When you shoot the EDC, it just feels like it was designed to fight with a trigger that could just run like a top on a platform that returns to zero so well. The EDC just works alongside you to give you pistol shooting superpowers. Like last year, I thought it was crazy to find a pistol that just spoke my language and flowed with me. And it's even crazier now to find it twice. The last pro that I'll harp on is one that I always mention, and that's the grip and the controls that I, they're just great. The bull grip just plants so well in your hand to help mitigate recoil. Add in the easier to reach controls, all designed in a smart way, 
and you have a system that just excels at everything. Well, nothing can be perfect at everything, so let's talk a few cons, and one of them has actually gotten a whole lot better, and that's availability. The EDC and other options are often sold out or impossible to find and require you to sign up on their email list in order to pick one up. Now, most other 2011 companies have a five to seven month wait list that they're just not upfront about, so it's something you're gonna run into all across the 2011 spectrum. If you paid attention to, Bull has actually already done quite a few drops, so they're definitely increasing production in America already. I actually just looked at the website, and this EDC is actually available for purchase at the time of this recording, so no crying in the comments today, boys. Now, though, the next con is kind of a hard one to get around, and that's, that's the price. With the added crown barrel and other upgrades, we've seen a slight increase in price due to that level up in the features that Bull offers. Again, though, all other 2011s are also expensive, and Bull is one of those rare companies that really tips the scales in favor of the performance and features you get to the, you know, the price ratio to give you just a huge, huge, huge bang for your buck. But of course, from a consumer standpoint, you have to look at the price and see if that's realistic for you or if there's something else on the market that just may fit you better. I certainly understand that one, and my 365 macro is just fantastic, so there are other options on the market. Those are my pros and my cons, though, for a platform that I obviously love, so what are my final thoughts? I really found the new Bull EDC to be that level up from the insane platform that I loved last year. With the flush bull barrel, subdued markings and accents, you have this ominous blacked out platform that just looks hungry. Combine that with the upgraded serrations, fantastic optic system, and the best grip on the market, it results in one of the highest balance of features to performance of any pistol on the market. The EDC is really that perfectly balanced katana that cuts through the air to just drop rounds with ease. It's jokingly fun to shoot, and I think that's one of my favorite things to do with guys who ask me about it when we're out at the range. I just tell them, here, take it, go shoot it. You're absolutely gonna love it. It's an instant smile maker, and everyone who shoots this pistol just has an instant kickstart to their shooting skills and their pistol confidence. Here I'll also add in the stat chart on the 2024 EDC if you wanna see how I ranked all the different little bits also. But you know, it really has me thinking, how does this really compare, like directly compare to last year's version that I just loved so incredibly much? Stay tuned as we put the 2024 EDC head to head against the aluminum frame SAS2 from last year to see which one is the best of the best. I'm telling you though, it's gonna be an uphill climb for this guy because me and the version from last year, we could just do some absolute work together. But I hope this review of the Bull Armory 2024 EDC in the four and a quarter version was useful in your purchasing decision. And I wanna say thanks to all of our Patreon and YouTube members. You make it possible we can test all these pistols and I can show them off to you and you can learn which one of these versions is best for you. And I wanna say thanks to everyone that likes, comments, and subscribes. Comment down below what you think about this EDC and what 2011 can beat it. I wanna put up against it. All right, everyone, Walsh out. So I'm not gonna lie to you, I'm a little bit, uh, a little bit disappointed with the CNH EDC. I tried to use this on my 365 and it didn't work because the cut just didn't seem to fit. Uh, I tried to use it on this one, now the screws didn't fit. And we really didn't love it in our review. So I don't know, I'm a little bit frustrated in this one. I'm gonna try and use it for a third time, but I mean, I'm gonna tell you right now, third strike, third strike and you're out. I'm trying to think of whatever, uh, what else I can have that's sassy to say, I'll probably include whole bunch of video of me getting cut off by the guy next to me sawing things a whole bunch. That was absolutely fantastic. And I was yelling at clouds a few times today. You probably noticed that with all the <laughs> brightness changes over and over again. Um, other than that, I don't even, I don't even have a clue as to what's next in terms of videos. So I can't even, can't even cheat and tease it to you because I don't, I don't even remember. All right. Enjoy that. Enjoy the B-reels. Go and then go away after that. You gotta, you guys are gonna leave at some point. The ports would just burn up a fiber optic if it was out. I hope the... It's the same thing every, every day. It's the same thing every single day. To fight with a trigger that can just run like a...
feels like it was designed to fight. I just looked, and this EDC is actually available per 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 I just looked, and this EDC is actually available per. Oh my God. 